But today, we're going to be talking about uh, cancer cytotoxicity uh, using a, uh, a novel three-dimensional cell culture technology called Albertext. And uh, this is a, uh, a presentation uh, by myself. I'm Stefan Shaborski, I'm the CSO at Reinnovate. And also, uh, welcome our partner, Dr. Samir Dar from Oncotest, who's uh, based in Germany. And uh, together we're going to talk about uh, this technology and some of the applications of this technology towards cancer cytotoxicity. So what uh, I'm going to do, first of all, is to uh, provide uh, a brief introduction into the differences between 2D and 3D uh, cell culture to then uh, define uh, our solution to three-dimensional cell culture, which is Alvatex technology, uh, and then to just mention some of its uh, general applications before we then go into a more in-depth example using uh, Albertext for cancer cytotoxicity assays. And then what we'll do is we will uh, finish off by looking at how this technology is compatible with a variety of uh, analytical methods, many of which I'm sure are familiar to you all. And then we'll finish with a joint uh, question and answer session. So probably uh, be done within 25 to 30 minutes. Okay, so without further ado, I shall move on. I hope all the slides are moving forward for you all and you can hear me clearly. So let's first of all consider uh, what happens in normal conventional cell culture. So the, the red dot is pointing to the in vivo situation. So this is real tissue and cells designed naturally in 3D and make close connections with each other as shown in the schematic diagram. Now, what happens, of course, in the in vitro situation is that this relationship between cells is disrupted and cells come into contact with this flat plastic substrate, most often made of polystyrene, sometimes glass, and cells adapt to this foreign environment and do so by flattening out, as you can see here in this schematic diagram. And it is well known in the literature that uh, as cells undergo the shape change, they remodel their internal cytoskeleton, and this has an impact on gene transcription and protein translation, and this ultimately affects cell function. So studying cells in this format is very different to how they are in the in vivo situation. So anything that can be done to improve the way in which cells grow in uh, vitro will have a radical impact on the output of the data from such studies. If we look at this uh, in a little bit more detail, in 2D, most of the cell is against, or half of the cell is against the plastic, the other half against the medium, cells are flattened as I mentioned. The interaction between cells and cell signaling is significantly reduced and cells certainly can't produce more complex structures as they can in vivo. If you look at an individual cell using a confocal microscope, this example is a fibroblast and it's been stained with phylloidin to show the F actin cytoskeleton. You can see indeed how a cell becomes very, very thin in conventional 2D culture. Whereas in 3D, and this is using Alvatex technology, the cell acquires a three-dimensional shape all round. The same applies to organelles in the cell, uh, the chief organelle being the nucleus, and you can see again how this has become flattened, whereas in 3D it's spheroidal all the way around. And this is well known in the literature, and here are two examples of many papers which have been published on this phenomenon. So changing the shape of the cell has a radical impact on its function. So imagine a solution, therefore, where we can stop this shape change from occurring and enable cells to grow in three dimensions. So we've developed Albertex technology, which is a solution for simple and routine 3D cell culture. It enables uh, increased cell viability, functionality, to create 
a more representative and more physiologically relevant situation to study cells in the laboratory. So this is Albatext. Albatext is, as shown in this uh, scanning electron micrograph, a highly porous form of polystyrene. So normally polystyrene in 2D uh, situations is presented as plates and petri dishes, whereby the cells form monolayers, as I've already described. In Albatext, we've introduced what is known as the Z dimension. And in this porous scaffold, cells enter the material and they pile up on each other and form three-dimensional uh, structures. Albatext is manufactured as a thin 200 micron thick membrane, as it says here. It is very porous. In fact, 90% of the material is actually, material's volume is actually space. Um, space in which the cells can enter and form in vivo-like structures. So this membrane here on the right is now completely full of cells and you cannot see the structure, the actual uh, detail of the scaffold. In fact, we've created a slab of tissue in the dish. So Albatext is available in different uh, product formats. We have plate formats such as 12, 24 and 96 well uh, versions. We also have uh, two types of well inserts currently available, 6 and 12 well. You'll be familiar, of course, with these formats of products. That's the other advantage of our technology in that it is adapted to a format which uh, is commonly used. The difference being that now you can practice 3D cell culture. The presentation of the scaffold is very important, and we've put a lot of energy into understanding this. So essentially, here are some examples of where you can present the scaffold in two different ways. So in scenario A, the scaffold is on the bottom of the well, so therefore the cells are fed from above only. In B, we have a situation where the cells receive nutrition from the medium from above and below. In longer term uh, 3D cultures, it is possible to increase the volume of medium that is used to support your 3D culture. And we do this in this device here. And this is very simply a Petri dish containing this cradle. You can see the outline there. And it houses three well inserts. And this uh, uh, scenario takes up to 80 to 90 milliliters of medium. So you can manage to maintain your 3D cultures for long periods undisturbed. Very useful if you want to, to for example, generate conditioned media from 3D cells. So Albatext has multiple applications. And it's almost a generic solution to 3D cell culture. And we have uh, put a lot of energy again into demonstrating the range of applications uh, in various different uh, tissue types. Uh, we've demonstrated how cell structure and function, cell growth and differentiation are influenced by growing in 3D. And we have uh, work programs uh, in liver and stem cell science. We have also developed a range of assays and in vitro models. And we're going to be talking today about the cancer cell biology models we have. And it's also possible to create more sophisticated cultures and uh, engineer tissues in vitro uh, using Albatex technology by creating layers, alternative layers of different cells in co-culture. Uh, for example, we have a, a skin equivalent model as shown in this uh, figure here. So it's a very versatile and flexible technology. So for the purposes of today, we are going to focus on this cancer cytotoxicity application in this uh, Albatext 3D culture technology. So an overview is as follows. We will demonstrate that we can create 3D cellular morphologies uh, to bring our culture systems more closely to how they represent tumor tissues in vivo, compare the viability of cultured cells uh, with equivalent conventional 2D cultures, 
demonstrate cytotoxicity to uh, known compounds and also demonstrate uh, higher throughput capability uh, using the 96 file plate format. So here's an example of a growth curve in 3D culture using Albatext. And this is for a well-known cell line, MCF7, breast tumor lineage. This is a, a simple uh, MTT assay looking at uh, cell viability over 21 days. And we have a, an initial linear expansion of the cell population. Although indeed, we also reach confluency in 3D culture as well as you would in 2D culture. Albeit often it may take longer depending upon the number of cells which are seeded into the material of the scaffold. So there's an example of a very simple assay that one can uh, perform uh, using our text technology. As we go through the presentation, and I'm sure you've already appreciated, our text is compatible with a range of uh, techniques which are often used in the general cell and molecular laboratory. Okay, so we can visualize cells in a number of ways within the uh, material. And in this example, we've used histology to follow the development of the NCF7 3D culture over 14 days. And you'll see how the culture builds up and becomes more dense uh, as time progresses. So that is standard histology that one can perform using uh, Arbitext. So it's fixation, wax embedding, and microtome sectioning and H&E staining. And it's exactly the same procedure as you would perform uh, if you were given a piece of cancer tissue, mainly because what you're producing in culture is effectively a piece of tissue uh, using a cell line in this case. But nonetheless, uh, the same procedures uh, apply. So if we look in more detail at this, what I've done on this slide is to show you uh, where the 2D MCS7 culture uh, resides. So this is a standard uh, monolayer culture as you would perform using conventional 2D uh, methods. And over here, what we have is a picture of a xenograft. So these cells now have been put into a, an animal and produced a xenograft tumor. So we position Alvatext and 3D culture in between these two, and we argue strongly that uh, this situation is becoming more like the animal situation rather than growing cells in 2D culture, whereby we have limitations as previously described. So in a way, this, these three images show very nicely where Alvatex is positioned in relation to existing technologies. And if we look over on to the right, we can see a higher magnification for NCF7 cells, how they form these uh, aggregates within the tissue, and we get similar structures inside uh, Alvatex, as shown in panel B. What's also interesting is that uh, we can also identify production of extracellular matrix, and we've got some staining here for uh, collagen within the uh, NCF7 3D cultures. So having uh, established a 3D culture, then it is possible to treat and expose those cultures to uh, known uh, or candidate uh, cytotoxic compounds. So this is an example of NCF7 cells having been exposed to tamoxifen. In this case, we've only grown the cells for a short period of time, uh, three days prior to exposure to the drug for either 24 or 72 hours. And we do get marked differences in the uh, kill curves between 2D and 3D culture. And from those curves, one can calculate uh, IC50 values as shown in this plot. And that's using standard procedures. In this example, uh, we've actually allowed, first of all, the NCF7 cells to grow for 10 days. And we create a much more dense culture uh, and structures which resemble the xenograft as uh, described earlier. And again, we can treat with compounds, uh, this, in this case, 
uh, tamoxifen and doxyrubicin to uh, understand how uh, those drugs are cytotoxic to those cells in the 3D situation. Okay, so that work I just described to you was uh, previously done in formats such as our uh, 12 well and 24 well plate. Uh, now I'm going to switch our attention to uh, more recent work using our 96 well plate format as shown in this photograph. So whenever one starts working with 3D cultures, it's important initially to understand how those cells grow. And we recommend that we do some optimization initially. Uh, so we've got two cell lines here, SW620, which is a colorectal lineage, and then MCF7 here. And you can compare quite nicely the growth curves of those two different cell lines in 3D and 2D. In some instances, you'll see that they are reasonably similar. But in others, such as MCF7, the growth is actually quite different. And in here, in this case, we've actually got opportunity for more growth in the uh, 3D situation at uh, different seeding density. So optimization involves determination of cell seeding density and growth period. And we have uh, what we call our 96 wall plate booklet. And in that, you will find a lot of guidance of how to go about uh, looking at your own cell line in Albertext and optimizing its growth. Very simple, straightforward procedure. And indeed, uh, we may have even already have tested uh, cell lines that you're interested in or some which are very similar to your own cell line because we're increasing the uh, number of examples that we're working with all the time. So just like in uh, the other formats, in a 96 well plate, the cells grow in 3D and this is shown histologically here for LN229, a glioblastoma lineage. And there again is the 620 cell uh, line, the colorectal tumor uh, lineage. So it is feasible to uh, see the cells again. So just before I hand over to uh, Samir, I just want to outline uh, this collaboration uh, that we have between uh, Reinnovate and Oncotest. It also involves uh, a cell. A robotics automation company known as TCAN, and we are using a uh, well known commercial kit developed by Promega, uh, in this case, Cell Type to Glow. Uh, and it's a nice uh, sort of four way collaboration bringing together uh, a unique population or unique populations of cells from Oncotest, our 3D technology, a well known commercial kit, and an automated platform. So at this point, I will now pass over to Samir. And Samir, I've just moved over the okay. control. Do you have that now? Yes, I do. Uh, do you hear me? I hear you, yes. OK, perfect. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for your patience. And uh, thank you for joining in for the uh, webinar. And uh, Stefan, thanks for your nice presentation and outlining the, meticulously the Alvitex technology and, and its use in uh, drug development and particularly oncology drug development in our uh, case. So just uh, uh, I'll give you a little bit of introduction about who we are. Uh, Alcotest is located in Freiburg. Uh, we are a contract research organization, and it was founded by uh, Professor Heiner Fiebig in 1993. Uh, he himself is an oncologist and has been uh, pra practicing oncology here at the Freiburg uh, University Clinic. Um, so the idea was to be able to kind of uh, use a complementary system, not just the cell lines, and also uh, 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 have more xenograph derived tumor models that we could use as a clinical tool for drug development. And uh, so um, over these years, uh, we have uh, basically outlined a huge repository. And before I go into the repository, 
just a quick run up on, as you see on the slide, this is our kind of um, uh, break up of um, the platforms that we use uh, uh, at uh, Alcatraz. Starting from monolayer assays, which are two dimensional uh, cell culture assays, moving on to clonogenic assay, well, what has been our working horse for many, many years, uh, both in 24 well format and 96 well format. And then moving on to in vivo studies, where we do more preclinical in vivo evaluation for the compounds. And also, um, additionally, to kind of add up, we also characterize, we have well characterized tumor models uh, uh, based on the gene expression data sets as well as um, uh, the changes in the SNPs and the copy numbers. And so we have all the whole molecular data sets of most of these uh, tumor models that are now um, characterized. So now the question for us has always been, uh, because as we know, I mean, there has always uh, been great disappointment with the drug development itself, that um, many of these drugs, they pass through the initial phases of the drug screening, in, uh, either in 2D or 3D, but when, you, when it comes to in vivo preclinical evaluation, then uh, it really presents as a, a kind of one of the disappointing uh, factors. So uh, what we are like at Alcott has also constantly trying to uh, figure out. So what, how, how can we close the gap between um, clonogenic assay and in vivo studies? So is there something we can use a kind of complementary uh, system where we not only would look at the 3D cell culture, in addition we could also try to see whether we can complement this uh, in terms of the more um, to, to look at uh, the tumor marker environment and its influence, and which includes the co-culture and also whether we are able to do post-drug uh, treatment evaluations where we could recover the material from the well, from single, single well, and uh, then do, do downstream analysis looking at the proteins or at um, uh, changes at mRNA level. So that's how we actually uh, got in touch with Rener Wake in April last year. Uh, since uh, uh, soft agar assay uh, itself poses the beta limitation, so we cannot really go into, uh, we cannot do any post um, uh, translational or transcriptional uh, studies. So. Uh, and our uh, reinnovate uh, uh, presents a per, uh, one of the best uh, platforms of all we have tested so far, uh, which are non agar based, and that was the reason that we have a very nice. Uh, we have been collaborating since April 2012, and uh, trying to see how the system would not only fit in with our with all contest realms, and uh, and how we could offer it to other. Um, our pharma uh, partners. In the next slide, uh, it just uh, shows what uh, the repository that we have at Oncotest right now. Uh, patient there are tumors, PDX, what we call. So you see these as on the table on the right side. So this is just a run up of the, the, tour, the tumor models we currently have uh, at Oncotest, and we are. Uh, always in the process of increasing our uh, tumor models within Oncotest and also to provide these to our pharma uh, customers and our collaborators as uh, screening uh, uh, tools. Um, and uh, we are also in the process of uh, acquiring more hematological based tumor models into our repository. And the, the and the the table on the left side, as you'll see, it just gives uh, kind of the numbers of what we have currently in terms of the uh, patient derived tumors and also the cell lines, and also we continuously uh, look into the in vivo feasibility uh, feasible models, and then we also do a lot of extensive background studies on how feasible they are. In, in ex, as ex vivo uh, models, how they grow, and uh, so then we, correct, we uh, you, uh, deem them as uh, ready to use models. So, uh, 
And so this is, in this slide, this is basically how the process is uh, conducted. So we have the tumor bearing mice here, and our mouse in this case. Uh, we uh, excise the tumor, uh, do the digestion, prepare the two single tumor cell preparations, and then to freeze these cells. And then uh, in the past, we always, as I mentioned earlier, we use our uh, TCA, our tumor clonogenic assay formats, both 24 and 96. And just recently, as I mentioned, uh, just uh, since last year, we have also evaluated the Alitex platform. So we can do both these uh, asset formats uh, with the automated setup using our uh, TEC and EVO 200 uh, platform. And what we have seen, we have also been doing a lot of background work on in terms of uh, 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 the ability to use frozen suspensions and uh, as opposed to fresh suspensions. So we have uh, quite a, uh, a huge amount of data where we have seen quite nice corroboration between the samples, like whether we use fresh or fresh frozen uh, samples. So that was the uh, uh, in brief about the ALCO test. And now coming back to Albatex. So as I mentioned earlier, so we have been exploring uh, complementary setups um, where we could not only look at the viability, but also be able to look at um, uh, post-translational and uh, as well as po uh, transcriptional uh, um, aspects uh, in terms of the drug development or characterizing particular drugs. So in the first instance, as we got the 96 of uh, plates from the reader week, so the idea was to see whether we can uh, just reproduce these data sets or be able to uh, run our tumor models on our test and see and see what's going on there. So as you see in this uh, in this um, yeah, in this graph, so we used uh, classical drugs, uh, uh, 5-fluorouracil, uh, doxorubicin, gam and gamsarabine, 5 fu and gamsarabine being uh, classical anti-metabolites, and as well as doxorubicin, which is a known uh, topoisomerase uh, to inhibitor. And here we use bladder cancer and non-small cell lung cancer tumor cells. And do the uh, culture these in the presence of drug for a period of 7 to 13 days and uh, perform simple cell cytoglo assay. And uh, here, as you see, there's a nice dose response in these uh, in these uh, cells with a very tight uh, uh, um, standard deviations. So this was the first step, and all, of course, uh, uh, we're not going to show all the data here, but we uh, we did uh, look into other tumor models and see whether there are any tumor models which are not feasible in this format. So so far, we we could not actually um, uh, we could not identify the models that we that, that were not suitable for this format. So. Now, uh, having said this, now the question was whether we can really, uh, whether we can really uh, see any similarity or dissimilarity between the two assay formats. That is, the soft other clonogenic assay and our tax. So, as as you see on the on the figures, uh, using the same tumor models, and however, we also use uh, uh, drugs which are tubulin binders or again 201 isomerase inhibitor or anti EGFRs. Uh, for example, in this case, we use Arlotin. And again, as you see, the two assay formats, they are quite, they run quite similarly along, the, as you see, based on the drug response curves or their activity pattern. And uh, these results were also observed uh, when we tested other, uh, other tumor models. So uh, these two assay formats run quite nicely uh, in parallel in terms of the uh, corroborating data sets. So which gave us a lot of confidence that, okay, the first step is um, to, to be able to use our text platform, and the second step is to see if how the data would correlate with our existing formats. Because we always did not want to uh, reinvent the wheel. So we, we wanted to see how this uh, platform 
would suit our needs and to the needs of our potential collaborators. So uh, uh, after uh, so um, additionally, what we are because the Oncotest is also um, keenly interested in combination studies. So we have been doing a lot of two drug combination studies. Uh, to see if whether we can really improve the, the efficacy of uh, efficacy then as opposed to using single drugs, which is not a uh, uh, which is not not a new thing. I mean that's always been used in clinics in the past, and also especially uh, using the targeted drugs. So here I have just taken a simple example. So where we uh, you, to, to, uh, we use uh, non-small cell lung cancer derived cell suspension and uh, culture in our text platform uh, uh, in, uh, against single drugs in single or in combination. That's uh, CMAT alone and. Uh, EGFR uh, uh, inhibitor alone, and then this drug in combination. So as you see, this uh, there are five concentration curve, uh, the point uh, concentration curve. So <coughs> when we look at the viability, we do not see anything happening until concentration three, and then there's something starts happening uh, at the, at, uh, during the last two concentrations. So now you would assume that okay, this concentration uh, there is. Uh, uh, the effect is not as pronounced when we look through the viability, but when we retrieve, when we lyse the cells, when we took the cells from the same these wells from concentration one, two, three, and if you look at the western blot on the right side, so you see at concentration three, there's already something happening at the phosphorylation status in the cells, and when you look at the combination also, you see that again. But there is already uh, there are already changes happening at the phosphorylation cell, which is not visible when we look at do the simple viability assay. So this really uh, uh, this really uh, actually gives us confidence. This this is particularly interesting in terms of targeted drug therapy. So where if we First of all, were you were to use simple viability assays, we of course may not see anything happening. But if we go look into post-translational studies, or if we look at fast changes phosphorus level, we can see the difference. And this also tells us that probably, of course, we would also have to be careful uh, in using the assay endpoint as a measurement. That we could probably not only rely on the viability. Uh, uh, endpoint as an endpoint assay, but maybe use specific uh, assay, like as a kinase assay or others that we are also exploring at Alcatraz. And um, also, additionally, uh, I'd like to add that we were also able to collect the samples for RNA preps, and uh, you could see you could really get enough amount to be able to do to look at um, the changes at the RNA level. I mean, we have not shown the data yet, we, we, but we are constantly, <coughs> we have been now working on improving these methods. So basically, the, our, what, we, um, uh, what we have ob observed is that we not only can reproduce the data using <coughs> uh, these uh, uh, the tumors and and like I said, a classical drug or a targeted drug, but at the same time, we can also uh, we can also do much more than just the viability assay, and which is actually um, uh, shown here on the slide as uh, from the conclusions. But first of all, uh, as you already saw, that we uh, the data that we acquired from 3D format was quite reproducible. And they corroborated very well with the, our conventional soft added acid drug activity pattern. And secondly, we were also able to to do the combination studies and the drug combination activity pattern from this 3D Alvitex assay also reflected the, uh, the activity pattern that we have from our historical data set. And additionally, we we can we can perform multiplex assays. Uh, or endpoint assays using our text, and also 
we also realized that there was a quite a difference or quite interestingly high dynamic range when we use Alvitex plates. So uh, the signal to background ratios would be more than 80 fold as compared to uh, in when we use soft as a chlorogenic assay, we have more than 20, uh, 20 fold. So which is pretty good in it itself. But when we look at some of the tumor suspensions, which may not grow very well in the agar format, but we still see that they they are uh, they feel they are thriving in the Alvitex formats. So these are the the main main conclusions that we have found, and we are constantly uh, working on uh, together with Irinervate in trying to address not only uh, the issues for to be able to identify biomarkers using this platform, but also as you see in the next slide, uh, what we are currently focusing on to, to develop the co-culture techniques uh, within Oncotest as well, where we, we take a cohort of cell lines or patient-derived tumor cells, and then we uh, uh, culture these cell lines together with either uh, classical human dermal fibroblasts to start with, or we use more cancer-associated fibroblasts. And uh, we are now in the process of uh, uh, working on uh, melanoma, specifically melanoma tumor models, where we would uh, test a screen a different uh, quite a variety of fibroblasts, both melanoma-associated fibroblasts or other cancer-associated fibroblasts, as well as um, uh, human dermal fibroblasts to see if what kind of response we would see in this uh, in this platform and how this would basically translate when we go to more in vivo preclinical uh, uh, drug development uh, processes. So um, I think I will uh, stop here and uh, uh, <coughs> hand over um, time, uh, and let Stefan take over and he will finish up. Stefan, uh, I'm just going to uh, transfer, uh, so you already have it now. Yeah, uh, okay. Thank you very much, Samir. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. You can, great. Well, thank you very much. Um, just to follow up on that, uh, it's been a very successful collaboration between the two companies. Uh, we're certainly able to advance our research and knowledge uh, around uh, cancer cell biology, our understanding of these molecules, and also developing much more physiological and pathological relevant models, which is really key to what we're trying to do. So as uh, Samir said, I'll just finish off. So if I move to the next slide. So as I mentioned, we're working with a number of different cell lines. Uh, some of them are listed in this table, representative of different diseases, uh, disease models. Uh, they're popular cell lines. Uh, we've also screened a panel of well-known uh, anti-cancer reagents over these cell lines as well. Um, but we also work with customers. So if there's a particular cell line that you are interested in uh, and we don't have it, uh, we can consider working together and optimizing the growth of that cell line in Alvatex to enable you then to use it to take it forward to conduct research. Here's an example. This is uh, an A549 cell lineage. And you can see uh, initially that growing very well in the material um, and a simple growth curve and histology. So the evidence uh, that we've provided thus far in this presentation, uh, but also the huge amount of evidence we have on our website will show you that indeed if you grow cells in Alvatex, it will affect their structure, their viability, differentiation, function, and organization. And it's a very versatile technology as I mentioned. One of the things you could also consider doing is explanting primary tissue into Alvatex and then maintaining those cells in 3D culture. 
And here's an example of just doing that. So this image here shows uh, on the top very nicely the uh, piece of tissue applied to the surface of Albatex and cells flowing out of the material, uh, out of the tissue into the material. So there's another thing to uh, consider uh, using this technology for another application. So I want to just finish off by covering a, a range of simple technologies which are compatible with Albatex. So uh, one of the questions we often get is that how can I see my cells inside the material? Well, any uh, piece of tissue that you're presented with, you'll always face that question, and that is a challenge. And of course, there are methods which have been developed to help you see cells inside tissues. So we, we've developed a, a very simple method which you can use in the laboratory, in the cell culture lab, uh, using existing equipment. So it basically involves taking a, a, a dye, neutral red, staining the cells. You can see them very clearly then down the uh, standard inverter stage microscope. So uh, the images here uh, show uh, the bottom, well, the bottom uh, red stained cells are actually taken from a standard inverted uh, microscope. So the cells, you can see, you can see their distribution. You can see uh, an idea of their viability, and also the density of the culture. So that's that's useful in the initial stages of optimization if you wish to uh, examine uh, those elements of your culture. And we have a protocol online uh, to enable you to uh, conduct this method. Uh, just like normal tissue, it can be fixed. When grown in uh, Alvatex, cells can be fixed. Uh, they can be fixed with a variety of different standard uh, fixatives, uh, buins, paraformaldehyde, deuteraldehyde, and prepared for different applications downstream. So in this example, we've got in A, we have the uh, buins fixed disks of Alvatex. So they're yellow. And you can see in uh, that's in panel A. In panel B, we've got uh, the materials then embedded in paraffin blocks. And in C, we've got microscope slides of sections from those blocks. And you can see clearly, if you follow the uh, slides from four days to 21 days in panel C, you'll see the uh, lines on those slides begin to darken. And that is actually the 3D culture developing over that three-week period. And of course, you can look down a microscope and you can see the 3D culture very clearly, as shown in uh, the example in D. Okay, so Samir, can I ask, can you see that marker moving around, that pen? No, I just wanted to try and see if I got my pointer working. Um, just a second whilst I... Right. Yeah. Do you see the red dot now? Yeah. Good, good. Okay, so uh, that'll help me in the next uh, few slides. Okay, so uh, once a, uh, a histological preparation is created and we have uh, sections on slides, you can then do all sorts of things. Uh, here's an example of in immunocytochemistry, looking at protein expression using fluorescence microscopy. That can also be conducted uh, using cryostat uh, sections as well, just in case your antibodies don't like uh, paraformaldehyde fixation and antigen retrieval. So you can actually use uh, standard uh, uh, cryopreservation methods as well with Alvatex and 3D culture. Uh, Confocal, I've already mentioned, and here's some more examples. Uh, electron microscopy, this is also compatible with the technology. So ultrastructure, this is uh, transmission electron microscopy. Uh, this is one cell here and the other cell over here on the left, and this is a tight junction between the cells. Uh, in this case, on the right, we've got scanning electron microscopy. Uh, you can just see small amounts of alpha text here. That's a piece of alpha text as shown with the pointer, and all this other material are cells growing in 3D. 
just like uh, standard uh, cell culture plastic, it was possible to coat Arbitex with known cell culture reagents such as extracellular matrix proteins, uh, collagen, fibronectin, laminin. Uh, you can also use polylysine, polydeornithine, polyalonephine, I should say, uh, also matrigel and pure matrix. So the nice thing about uh, filamentous proteins such as uh, collagen as shown in this example at the top is that rather than a flat film of ECM protein, you actually have a three-dimensional web of the protein inside the scaffold. And that is really how cells will be exposed to the uh, ECM in tissues uh, as opposed, rather than a flat film. So that's also an advantage. Um, some cells, of course, naturally grow as monolayers. And you can think of simple uh, epithelia lining cavities and vessels in the body. And of course, uh, they wouldn't be therefore ideally suited to grow inside Albatex scaffold. So one can uh, coat the surface of Albatex to render it flat, as shown in uh, this scanning electron micrograph. And then you can seed cells on the surface to create a monolayer uh, of cells, such as an epithelium. And this is an example here of a CACO2 uh, epithelial lineage sitting on a layer of collagen gel. And then underneath, you have the Arbitex scaffold. And the advantage of doing this is because you get greater porosity through the scaffold than you would do a transwell membrane, an existing product. Uh, and also, you can co-culture uh, stromal cells inside the Arbitex to create an epithelial uh, uh, stromal interaction. It is also feasible to transfect cells in 3D. And we've developed technology with a company called Mirus in the US. And they have reagents which can uh, transfect cells in Arbitex. It is also possible to, as, as Samir has alluded to, uh, apply various commercial uh, kits to Alvatex uh, and the 3D cell cultures. Uh, on the uh, left here, we have an example of a cell viability assay, this is NTT. And on the right, we've got gene and protein uh, expression analysis from uh, protein and nucleic acid having been isolated and extracted from our 3D cultures. And we have protocols online for uh, these methods uh, as well. And again, this is possible in 96 mol plate formats as well as the other formats that we manufacture. It's also possible to determine the number of cells inside the material. And this can be done uh, using a pico green assay. And this is based on uh, the amount of double stranded DNA. Again, that's a commercial kit and the protocols online. Um, Co-culture, as Samir mentioned, is uh, a way in which cell culture is progressing in the future. Of course, cells in the body don't reside on their own uh, within tissues. Tissues are complex structures consisting of multiple cell types, and it's only right, therefore, to study them uh, in co-culture. And as you can see from this uh, schematic, series of schematics, there's various ways in which cells could be mixed and co-seeded in 3D, or you can have co-culture of 2D and 3D, or two 3D cultures together if you've got uh, paracrine signals released from one cell type to influence another. So there's lots of flexibility to use this technology. Uh, here's an example. So this is uh, an example of Albatex being first full of uh, fibroblasts, as shown in A. And then we've seeded on the surface uh, the colorectal tumor cells. And in another project, we're studying invasion of those tumor cells in amongst the fibroblasts. So this is mimicking how uh, the cancer will invade surrounding stromal tissues in the pathological situation in vivo. So in summary, uh, Arbitext is a versatile platform. It enables you to practice now 3D culture in your conventional cell culture laboratory. It's easy to use. It's widely available in different formats. 
Uh, we've heavily exemplified it and demonstrated its application. So have our collaborators, so have our customers, and now people are beginning to publish their papers in uh, journals and present their data at scientific conferences. So, so Alvatech technology is being adopted by the scientific community and is moving forward. Uh, I strongly recommend that you go to the website, reinnovate.com. You'll find that there's a wealth of information about uh, what you can do with Albatech, how to order it, and how to follow uh, simple protocols online to enable you to get started using the technology. There's also educational videos, etc., so you can learn more about uh, the product.